Hi, my name is Patrick, and I make tutorial videos on microcontroller programming, basic circuit building, and random CNC stuff. In this video, I'm going to introduce the ARM microcontroller because I'm making a new series for the ARM microcontroller programming and basic circuit building. If you're new to this channel, welcome. If you're not new to the channel, then you're probably familiar with the ARM microcontroller tutorial series. I'm going to be redoing that series using a more appropriate IDE, the STM32 Cube IDE. This IDE is an Eclipse IDE that is tailor-made for the STM32 microcontroller. In the video series, I'll be referencing a book that I just wrote titled ARM Microcontrollers Programming and Circuit Building. And this is volume one. There are going to be multiple volumes. I'm going to be organizing this ARM video series in a way that is more natural or organic, uh, where I'm going to go into a specific application of robotics, develop certain parts of that robot. During that development process, I'm going to be using the, the book that I wrote, using it as a reference, and going into the details of this development and showing how I designed the part of the robot or the process of the robot and how I'm programming it. The detail of this development will be very basic so anybody can understand it. I'll be going into aspects of communication, uh, control, motor control, servo control, sensing the environment, such as sensing tilt or angular velocity. In the video series, I also may get into the development of the product through CAD software like Eagle or KiCad making the schematic in the software, producing the PCB and arranging the devices and traces. There are a couple of ways to get into microcontroller programming and uh, creating circuits. One of the ways is using an Arduino. An Arduino is a ready-made circuit that allows you to plug in shields of various types to gain uh, functionality. Or you can start with a basic chip like this. This is an STM32 microcontroller. It is an ARM-based chip. So what is a microcontroller? A microcontroller is a device that can receive input, as in ones and zeros, can receive input and communication from other devices like a computer or from uh, various, various devices that provide uh, different types of communication. It can receive an analog voltage using the onboard um, analog to digital converter. So it takes an analog voltage, which can be anywhere between zero and let's say 3.3 volts and convert that into a digital number. The microcontroller can also output. It can create an output in the form of uh, a zero or a one, which is a, a high voltage, which is like 3.3 volts. You can control devices using this type of output, like say turning on an LED or turning off an LED, uh, communicating with uh, devices like, like an LCD, turning on and off various digital lines of an LCD. You can also output a digital-like analog signal uh, called a PWM, pulse width modulation, where it outputs a digital signal that can be between zero and a voltage reference like 3.3 volts and anywhere in between. One of the coolest things about the microcontroller is that you can sense the environment and that's part of an input. Uh, specifically, it could be an ADC where you're sensing temperature and it would be, um, the temperature would be converted to a voltage and then you can convert that voltage into a number on the microcontroller specifying the temperature. You can also control much higher power devices with microcontrollers. Microcontrollers are everywhere. They're used in almost every electronic device that would be inside of a home or inside of your car. These microcontrollers are used in smart home devices and the Internet of Things, wireless devices, washing machines, TVs, monitors, computers. It controls the efficiency of your engine in your car. It's used in robotics. Microcontrollers can also be tied together to create a much more complex system. Microcontrollers are used in critical applications where lives are dependent on the functioning of the microcontroller. The Arduino platform is great for creating one-off projects and you don't plan on going into production 
with, uh, with the project. So if you have a small project that you want to get a very quick outcome to the project, you could use an Arduino, plug in the shields that you need, program the Arduino very quickly. But it would be very difficult to go from a one-off project using the Arduino to a production-ready circuit to sell to the masses. If you wanted to take this one-off project and you decided to go to market with it, it would be more difficult to create a, an efficient and cost-effective circuit starting from the Arduino. If you were starting your project from the actual chip itself and building from that chip out using only the components that you need, then you, you've already built in a more efficient design for the project. It might be a little bit more involved in creating the circuit for it, but you get, you're gaining um, an intimate knowledge of the circuit itself. You have uh, a more efficient and cost-effective circuit. So if you do go into production, you don't need to uh, spend a lot of money on a lot of the other parts that would come on a circuit like this. If you wanted to go from your one-off project and you've decided, okay, it's time to make this a, an actual product, you would need to understand how the circuit works internally. You would obviously want a product that is cost-effective and efficient in design. When creating a product, the number of components that you put on the product costs money, and you'd want to make sure that that product has the fewest components necessary. There's a lot of stuff that's on the Arduino that may not even be necessary for the product. You may not want a crystal oscillator, this particular button, this header, an external source for power. You may want to use battery, any of these capacitors. There are a few other chips that are here that obviously cost money and you may not need those. One of them is to provide USB communication. With the Arduino platform, you're bound by a particular chip that they put on their boards. When you're developing from the bare chip, you're not bound by any specific chip. As long as you know the fundamentals of programming from the bare chip, there's a wide selection of ARM-based chips out there. In the STM32 line, you can pick from the Cortex-M0 all the way to the Cortex-M4. In this series, I teach using the Cortex-M0, but the fundamentals are all the same. So when you program for the M0, you can pick up the M4, and there might be some variations in the data sheet, uh, but that's easy to just reference when you need to. So why did I select the ARM microcontroller over like an Atmel microcontroller? By the way, Atmel also make ARM microcontrollers, but this particular one is the AVR series. I've always wanted to get into the ARM architecture rather than uh, sticking with the AVR. And I was looking for some, some chips to use and I found the STM32, which is a very, very inexpensive chip compared to the Atmel AVR series, which is, has fewer features than the, the ARM STM32 chip. I believe when I was purchasing these, I think these were like $5 and these were $2. Uh, I don't know what the prices are right now uh, off the top of my head, but these are significantly cheaper and they have so many more features than the, the AVR uh, microcontrollers. The programming that you have to do to make an Arduino work and the program that you have to do to make a chip function in the same respect as the Arduino is very, very similar. You're using the same programming language, uh, C or C++. With the Arduino, you're plugging it into the computer and you're creating a sketch. A sketch is just a program and it's based in the C++ or C programming language. The same thing goes with the bare chip. You're programming in C or C++. When you're programming for the bare chip, you're creating programs that is more fundamental to the chip itself. So the microcontroller that I'm holding in my hand right now, you know, it's, it's obviously very difficult to, to interact with this microcontroller the way it is here. That's why the Arduino is so attractive because it's so easy just to plug into the computer and get started immediately. But microcontrollers can be broken out into pins like this where you just plug this into a breadboard. And breadboards are used for prototyping electronics where you develop your circuit on the actual breadboard itself where you have all of your discrete components. 
taking advantage of the, of the pins of this microcontroller. This is an example of, of how you use the microcontroller. So you have the microcontroller like this that is in the middle of this circuit board here. The circuit board is only the microcontroller and it's broken out into these pins. That's it. There's no other components on this circuit board. So you know that you're, you're designing specifically for this particular chip. And then when you go to create your product, all of the components you add around the microcontroller, you can easily design in your PCB designing software when you decide to put out a product. In this particular example of a circuit, the microcontroller is connected to an LCD screen here, and there's a potentiometer or a trimmer providing an analog voltage to the microcontroller. Similar to the way you would use a shield or some other device with the Arduino, with the bare chip, you're gonna be using passive components like resistors, capacitors, diodes, LEDs, but you can also use development boards from the manufacturers. The manufacturers will provide free samples of their application circuits or their boards, for instance, like an IMU, an inertial measurement unit that contains uh, accelerometers and, and gyros. You can find these development boards from manufacturers' websites. You can get free samples of them because they want you to develop with their chips and their components, their devices, and, uh, and they give you the application circuit in their data sheet. So all you'd have to do is apply that application circuit to your product and you have that taken care of. This is a passion of mine and I hope these videos show this passion and I'm really excited about it and I hope you join along with, with me in this journey.